So hello, everyone. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us here today for our webinar, LAS Parking Innovates with Text to Park. My name is Tony Graham. I'm the Senior Product Marketing Manager for Plevo, and I'm joined here today with the Vice President of Innovation at LAS Parking, Patrick Ryan. Patrick, thank you so much for joining us today. Hi, Tony. Welcome. Hello there. Thanks. Great to be here. Thank you. So for about the next 45 minutes or so, uh, we're going to be talking all about uh, how LAS revolutionized the text to park space, utilizing SMS for text messaging. Uh, and to give everyone a heads up, uh, the flow of the webinar, we're going to go over Patrick's role at LAS. We're going to go over who is LAS, you know, who's LAS parking, the journey of uh, text to park at LAS, uh, sort of the, the business and financial impact of text to park, uh, so what's next for LAS, LAS and Plevo, and then uh, if we have time at the end, we'll have, uh, we'll have some questions. And, and a word about those questions, so please feel free to post your questions in the Q&A feature at any time during the webinar. Uh, and then we'll collect those and we'll answer as many as we can before the time runs out at the end. So please feel free, uh, don't wait to the end to type it in, in case you forget, go ahead and use that Q&A feature right away. So let's kick this off uh, by telling everyone a little bit about Patrick Ryan, right? Uh, who is Patrick, your role, your responsibility at LAS? Yeah, so thanks, Tony. Um, so uh, I've been with LAS for 13 years, but I have been in parking for nearly nearly 30 years. Um, and my, uh, my job at LAS is that um, when you think of parking, most people kind of think of you driving along the street, you see a parking sign, you turn into that location. And, and that's sort of where the decision is made to park in that place. But my job is, is to handle everything that the customer sees and does for that time. So that is um, a website, apps, all of the technology that goes into uh, showing our locations and their prices and all the information about our locations on websites and apps and uh, in, in web journeys, and also the ability to purchase the parking um, ahead of time, because the customer decision of where to park is happening further and further from the, the driveway of the parking garage. Um, and uh, and I've, in, in my time with LAS, I started uh, working on the city of Chicago's on-street parking system. So they had thousands and thousands of those individual single space parking meters and my job was to get rid of those all and replace them with brand new technology that connected everything together wirelessly they were solar powered um, and in that project we went from taking it over from the city they had a targeted repair time of two days if something went got broken and uh, an actual repair time of about seven days. And after we had installed uh, the technology, that went to 42 minutes, average time to repair 42 minutes. So I'm all about rolling out technology. Nice. Um, so it's pretty cool. So not only do you incorporate uh, new technologies, right? Uh, you're, you're sort of the guy to kind of keep you ahead of the competition as well with those new technologies. So yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. All right. So cool. So so let's talk about LAS now. Um, yeah. Give us some background on LAS. Who is LAS? Uh, how your operations normally work? Yeah. So so LAS was founded, um, as it says, in 1981. So uh, more than 40 years ago by three best friends. And those three best friends are still the president, CEO, COO, they're still the, the key execs of the company 40 years later. Um, it was just them then. And now we have 13 and a half thousand employees across um, most states in the US. Uh, our key thing, and I know this is, this is about technology, but our key thing is we're, we're all about the people. We're all about our own people. Um, our, our mission statement is to create opportunities for our employees and value for our clients. And where that intersects with, with people is that we're all about the user experience. So an in-person transaction where you're greeting someone and looking them in the eye is, is classic LAS and we're fantastic at that. 
But as things go more and more virtual, you have kind of this potential, um, you know, opportunity that you can squander by having it be a really bad customer experience, or you can make it really user friendly for the customer. So for us, um, it's all about making that experience user friendly. So, um, you know, that's pretty hard to scale. And given that we have, you know, $1.4 billion in managed revenue, and we do something like more than a million parking transactions a day, we've got to have systems that, that work really, really simply and that are, that are super easy for customers. Wow, nice. Um, thank you. Okay, so, so we know about Patrick, we know about Laz. So what we're gonna do is do a little poll here. Um, we're, we're gonna give a, a real world scenario and then um, and we wanna see how everybody in the audience responds. So you have to drive downtown for a conference. It's a city you've never been to. Uh, you arrive at a pay to park lot. This will most likely be a one-time transaction. You'll probably never go to back to this parking lot again. Would you rather press buttons and insert a card into a pay station? Would you rather download a mobile app, create an account and pay to park? Or would you rather text a number to complete the pay to park transaction? Now, this is sort of, without going into much too detail, right? Like this is kind of like a real world situation, kind of like Laz was, was faced with, correct? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, those are the scenarios that we have at our locations today. Okay, so everybody in the audience, you know, don't be shy. Go ahead, throw your throw your vote in there. We'll give you a, 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 another couple of seconds here. Just a, just a few more seconds. Give everyone a chance to. Uh... Okay. So I think we are. I think that's pretty good. Got seventy eight percent participation. So here's the results. Now, so I think, I think this will play in well to the rest of this, um, <laughs> right? Into the rest that of the webinar. Yeah. Uh, and just, just a real quick note. Like, um, are you, are you surprised that it's just that there's no number two, whatsoever? Yeah. No, I, I am, I am quite surprised that there's none. Usually. There would there would be some, and there'd be a little bit fewer of the touching the buttons and paying at a pay station, but um, you know that's 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 great to see. Okay, so interesting. So keep this in mind, everybody. That the the majority here uh, was was the text, and then we did have some you know thirty three percent that wanted to to use the the pay station. Okay, so. Okay. So now that we know what the audience would prefer. So now we're going to start talking about text to park, right? So walk us through the core issue yeah. that Laz needed to solve, right? Uh, that brought about the text to park. Yeah. So um, we created, we built an e-commerce system about 10 years ago. And, and that is a system, I think, I, well, like I said at the start there, that uh, has all of our locations, our garages and our surface parking lots in the system and we can set prices for those in an online console and we can display those. And we could display that information for parking garages and we could let people buy that online or in our app because with a parking garage, there's a gate. So you can reserve ahead, pay in advance and you can be sure that when you get there, your space will be available because only people who have a reservation can go through that gate. Um, so we have, we've had that for many years, um, but the problem that we had with using that system for our ungated regular surface parking lots is that you could potentially reserve a space um, a week from now or even an hour from now and drive to that parking lot. And because it's not gated, everybody else is already parked there and you're, you're out of luck. So, um, so we, we really wanted to have a, a way that people could still pay electronically, still pay on their phones, um, but, uh, but we kind of were, were faced for that. Um, and, it, and it needed to be on demand. You need, with an ungated location, you need to be able to drive to the location. You know, often we have a few parking lots all close together or in a similar area. People can see if the spaces are, um, you know, are available, drive into that location and 
Uh, one of the, I mean, one of the early locations we had was in Minnesota. We we did that in winter. A lot of people want to sit in their car and pay for an air. They don't want to brave the, you know, brave the storm um, <laughs> right. by walking across the the lot. So we wanted a way that people could pull in, pay and 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 pay with their phone, um, and not have to not have to go to the machine. And you can nice. see a couple of examples there. You can see um, some variations of our uh, of some of our signs. These ones are in, in Massachusetts. Okay. Um, so, so that sets the background there. So you had a vision on how this issue could be solved, right? So, what was your idea, and, and how did you come about? Like, how did this idea even come? You know, come to Patrick? <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, you know, we've all seen things, and we've all interacted with. Um, with text, uh, you know, with friends, and also uh, there's, there's marketing, and there there are other types of uses for text. Um, the the problem that that we had is that our non garage ungated surface lots are are usually used by people who are just going to park with us once. They may not really know anything about LAS. They certainly wouldn't have an account, um, and uh, you know, and and a lot of our competitors at the time would say, um, you know, yeah, you can pay on your phone, just go to the app store, download the app, sign up for an account, put your credit card in, all of those kind of things. And to me, that was pretty inconvenient. And I thought we were really missing out on, on uh, a lot of customers because of that. Um, so it's, you know, an app is great and we, we have an app and it's great for our repeat customers and our monthly customers. Um, but you still have to go and get it from from the app store. Um, but uh, but you know for customers who needed access to to pay with with an e-commerce solution, they needed something simple and they needed they needed something familiar as well. You know and and um, it's, you know text just fit that bill. So um, you know I I propose that we um, provide a way for people to pay by, uh, starting their transaction by text because it's nice and familiar. Okay. So the idea kind of seems genius, right? And I think that like we saw from the audience that uh, texting or pay stations was actually, you know, was, was higher than, than the app, but yeah. um, that, that wasn't the same train of thought, right? Throughout, throughout LAS, um, you had to per persuade some coworkers. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we are part of a, we, at the time we were part of a larger organization um, our kind of parent company was a big European company and, and definitely their thought was, yeah, you should be making sure everybody is signed up and, you know, everybody downloads the app because that's how you get, you know, the most transactions and the most loyalty. Um, but I have a sign and I, I would spring my camera around, but I, I don't want to mess things up here, but um, I have literally a sign above my door uh, that, you know, like the, like the Vince Lombardi sign where you, where you I can walk it. out and I, I can smack it on the way out. And it literally says, think like a customer. Um, and, and that's sort of the last way is to try and think about it from a customer's perspective. So um, I sort of fought that fight internally um, and, and, and said, I think a lot of our customers don't want to be forced to download an app and be forced to sign up, even though look, that's preferable to us because now we have, you know, we can communicate with you, all of those kind of things. But really, the person who was only going to park with us once um, is a big part of our, you know, big part of our customer base. And and just looking at that poll right there, I mean, it, it says it all, right? We we have this issue today of app overload. There's an app for that. There's an app for that. There's an app for that. There's an app for everything, which is cool. But I know I spend a lot of my time looking at my phone and thinking, I'm never going to use this app again. You know, I delete them. Um, and for parking, you know, parking, unfortunately, for the temporary, you know, customer is kind of like a gas station. You know, I do think Shell or Chevron is better. But, you know, if this one's really close and the price is right, um, then that's the one I'm going to go to. And I want to have a good experience. And if I use it regularly, yeah, sure, I can sign up. But but don't force that. And so that's the fight that that sort of I took on. And um, 
you know, and, and I think I, I got that point across and then the rest was for me to prove it. Right. So, um, yeah, the proving point, right? So you, you finally got Laz to go through with text to park, right? You got the buy-in. Um, so now, um, what were the next steps? Like, how did you yeah, make it happen, well, right? Like, walk yeah, us through that. Have to build it. Right, right, yeah. Now walk us through. Not only just build it, but you have to find the tech, right? So now, yeah. like, you have to find, like, how am I going to do this, right? So walk us through how you found the right tech, how you evaluated mm -hmm. that tech, right? And and maybe even how integration went, say, with, like, Plevo. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, I went to our, our development team and uh, we have some in-house and some offshore and, and um, different, uh, different groups of development team. And one of them was using a different provider for notifications for some other, from up for some other things. Um, and that was sort of like, that was the, the starting point is we'll look, look at, look at those guys and speak to our developers about, you know, how they were to work with and, and whatever. And I think the general consensus is maybe we should keep looking. And, and we, we found Plevo um, through, at, I think our development team, my head of development um, found Plevo and sort of had a look, read, read about Plevo and, um, you know, um, sort of evaluated for them from there. I met with some Plevo account reps, um, but a lot of it was done on the basis of, um, you know, what's the service that they provide, how easy it will this be, and also how reliable this will be, right? Because if you can imagine, our entire business is running parking facilities and the clients we represent who own those parking facilities their entire business is having us manage to make sure that we collect the most revenue. If your system is down, people can't pay, you're out, you're literally out of business for that whole time. So um, the, the first thing we kind of went through is, um, you know, is, is the APIs and actually the actual development. And my dev team said, that, you know, this is great. There was excellent documentation. Um, it, it did what we needed to, and it was simple to, to integrate to. Um, it, it, it does go to, to say also the pricing was better at the time, and that was not necessarily the major factor, but it was certainly was certainly helpful. Um, and yeah, like re reliability. And, um, and then the thing that I personally, that gave me personal comfort was that on, um, on Plevo support pages, uh, there is a uh, you know status page that shows all of the downtime and there's very very little of it across all different things over a long period of time. I think it's the, the last month. Um, you know with the, like green 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 and here's a yellow and there's a you can click on it and it says you know this is something that you know the carrier had an outage at this time from you know this hour to this hour. Um, you know that was that was fantastic to um, to be able to see that transparency. And to also see the past reliability, so and that carried all the way through to, you know, to the implementation of of the of the system where we had to build it, um, make it work, coordinate with the Plevo team, uh, test it, and you know we had to go through all of that stuff before we could launch it to even see whether you know the uptake would be good. So, you went through all that. The project's yeah. done. You're ready to roll it out, right? So, step us through the rollout. Mm -hmm. Any surprises, any setbacks? Uh, what, you know, what'd you learn from the rollout? How'd yeah, so yeah. Uh, look, I, I'm sure there were surprises and setbacks. I think they were mostly on our side because this is the first thing, first time we'd ever done this. Um, you know, but every, everything, um, and you know, I, I don't, I don't know a, APIs, but what I, what I do know is that when my engineering team says, well, okay, this is very straightforward and we really can understand this and it's extremely well documented, that makes my life better. Um, for instance, I could say, when is this, when is this available? When are we, you know, when is it, when are we going to launch? Um, and they could tell me because they really could see exactly how it was. Most of the work and most of the back and forth was just because this is the first time that we had done that. Um, but, uh, you know, not just the documentation, the APIs, which which are kind of one-time support items, but also the um, 
you know, the Plevo support team uh, really did step us through. And there's a lot of back and forth in starting up a, a, a new product, a new development against a new set of APIs. Um, the support team was great. They have a really good ticketing system that, you, you know, that really you can, if you forget where you are and, you know, you're going away and developing and you come back a week later, you can kind of see the, the, the chain of information and two different developers on, you know, working in two different places on our side can also see what's happening in that ticket. Um, and then sometimes we would go, okay, got it. And our dev team would go away and they would work on something and it might be a week. Um, and, and we found then someone at Plevo would look at the ticket and go, mm, we haven't heard from these guys for a week. They would reach out to us and say, just so you guys are aware, like we, this is where we left it. Do you need anything from us? Which is, you know, which was great. And, and that um, sort of continues to this day as we make little tweaks and things and as we're asking questions and, and we're, we're sort of doing improvements to things on our side, you know, from time to time we'll potentially break things, something in testing or, or, or whatever. Um, as we do that, they're still, they will still come back to us and, and say, you know, how's it going? Do you need, do you need us? So that's, um, I, that's, I don't know that I've ever really worked with a team that does that thorough job. So that was pretty good. And that's an nice. example of, uh, that's an, another example of that sign there. Nice. Um, okay. So, so customer adoption, right? So you went from zero to 300 locate or zero to 300, zero to 600 locations, three years, but right. how, right. But, and in that time frame, like how fast did they, did customers latch on to text to park and, and like, how much was accelerated by COVID or was there any, you know? Yeah. So we did this pre COVID. Um, we trialed it in Columbus, Ohio. And, um, you know, I, I had a team there that I knew could, you know, try something different. Uh, they had one location that had a, a pay station in it, one, uh, one service lot that had a pay station in it. And we tried it there. Um, we put up signs. Um, we, we got it, we got it going, uh, you know, sort of in a test environment, a, a live environment that we could use live, live customer credit cards, but just for this one location. Um, and we found that basically half of all the transactions in the entire location almost immediately became text transactions. Um, you know, there is a pay station right there. It was only a small surface lot. So from anywhere in the location, you could see the sign with the pay station that says pay here. Yet half the people immediately just wow. started paying, paying with text. So, uh, I mean, the uptake is very quick and we found um, everywhere we do it, same thing. People just pick it up, uh, you know, first first day, and it's not one of those things that oh, people kind of have to get used to. You either show up and you're gonna you're gonna understand it and do it that way, or um, you know, or potentially you're not. So, um, you know, and then and then we just started rolling it out, and um, as we rolled it out um, across these 600 locations, we found pretty much the same thing. We have locations where 70% of all the transactions are done this way. Um, and, you know, customers, as you saw on some of those signs, customers still have um, the ability to download the app. And we, we do get app transactions, especially the people who park there every single day. Um, but a significant number of our locations and the transactions in those locations are, are text every day. And then in terms of, in terms of COVID, um, yeah, people didn't want to talk to it anyone um you know as as parking i mean <laughs> with COVID, our I, I always joke hey you know we were great in COVID. our only clients are airports hotels restaurants and like universities right <laughs> like, other than that we were fine so when all of those shut down um you know we had suddenly you know way fewer staff um so we could automate these locations uh, with with text to park, and people also didn't want to go and talk to anyone, even if they did have staff, and they didn't want to touch a machine or drop their credit card into a machine either. So uh, it really accelerated during COVID. Uh, you know the ability for people to um, 
to pay on their funds really, really, really skyrocketed. And we're kind of kind of double doubling every every year with our with our transaction rates. Now, so you know, you had the hunch that this would work. Were, were you surprised at how fast it took off, or was that what you were kind of expecting? I mean, I don't know whether I don't remember whether I was surprised. I think others were um, were surprised, and I think you know it clearly bore out what what we had thought or what what I thought how it would work. And we didn't really have to spend a lot of money doing the development um, because it's really front end kind of work. Um, and so I think it, you, you know, uh, you know, all these years later, I think everyone's pretty clear it was a, it was a good plan, it was a good idea. So, yeah, um, I, I'm I'm not I'm not that surprised. I'm I'm pleasantly reassured. <laughs> nice. Uh, and then, so think like a customer. How you know? Can you speak to anything about the customer experience? Um, yeah. As, so, as far as yeah. The customer experience is very, very simple. There is a sign in the location. It says text this number, and that number is our um, location number. It's, it's the state plus four digits. Um, text this number to our short code. Um, in testing, we used a lot. We used a long code as well, a long phone number as well. But we found that the short code was better and gave a better experience. Um, uh, and um, the customer receives a text back. With a, with a link that they can click and that starts the, um, the transaction. It drops them straight into that location and that's handled all by, by the um, Plevo APIs. And so they, they tap that. In our backend system, we also have uh, space for a custom text response as well. And we, we add that too. So in some locations, um, there are places where we have um, a, you know, free parking for the first two hours. So the great thing about text, as opposed to just a QR that would take us straight to a transaction, the great thing about text is there's an interaction between us, is we can respond with a link, but we can also say, by the way, you don't need to pay for the first two hours. Come back and click this link when, you know, two, if you're still here two hours from now. Um, and we can customize that to every single one of our locations. So you can imagine what it's like in 40 different markets, uh, 40 different states, 300 different markets. Um, every parking lot is different. Everything has different rules. Um, there are different other local competitors. To be able to customize that response directly from our system that our managers can access all the way through Plevo, all the way to a customer's phone is, is great. And it can be changed. We change that in our system uh, change that message in our system, and, and the next person who who texts in gets that same uh, gets that same response. So um, it's it's very helpful to be able to give them an instruction right on their phone. So it kind of keeps that pers personalization a little bit. That it, it really does, and it's it's reassuring too, right? You, you're not just giving them a jump off point. You're kind of having a little bit of a conversation there. Nice. Um, Okay, so text uh, your your text to to park has been out for a while. So what's the uh, impact that has been on LAS on your overall business? Well, mm -hmm. you know, with with text to park. Yeah, so we have thirty five hundred locations, but those locations are hotels and valets and, and, and whatever else. So physical, you know, garage or surface lot, we may have you know twenty five hundred. Let's say. Uh, uh, our e-commerce solution is in 1,500 of those locations. Um, uh, and, you know, being able to pay with your phone, obviously it keeps our, uh, it keeps things simple, provided we do our part well. Um, customers can get on their way quickly. They, they're less likely to have a need to go see someone or reach out to someone. Um, they kind of, they're able to self-service. Um, so that makes life a lot more simple for support for us. Um, and it obviously, you know, makes customers happier because they can just pay the way they want. Um, and, and they don't, they don't need an app, but they can get one. And in many cases, they, um, they can still pay at the pay station if they're sort of more old fashioned. Um, but, but as it says here, many locations, 
actually got to the point where they're like, why do we even have the pay station in my life anymore? Because everybody's paying on their phones. And that small surface lot in Columbus, Ohio, after a little while of, of being, of, of using text to park in that one experimental location, they, they came to the same conclusion. They literally put a giant bag over the pay station and a sign on and one of and one of our signs on it to text to park. Um, so uh, you know, I think that sort of bears witness to, to how simple it is that you, look, you give everyone the choice and you let them go their own way. Um, and uh, you know, and I think because it's so simple, they um, you know they've naturally kind of migrated to, to doing this. Um, and of course, pay stations, especially the ones that give change or accept bills. Uh, even dipping your credit card in a pay station, it's a mechanical device. And you can imagine in Chicago or in Minnesota or, or some of the, you know, some of the other more harsh environments we are, even in Arizona, which is harsh on the other end of the spectrum. Um, those pay stations are complicated and expensive to keep up and, and, and maintain. Um, so in locations where we can take those out, obviously we have no physical plant in the location and, and the upkeep is, you know, is far reduced. Yeah. So, and yeah, no, especially like here, yeah, well, here in Florida, when we get our passing rain downpour, it's nice you not have to get out or even roll your window down if you, right, to the rain then. So very convenient. Yeah. Yeah. Look, we have the signs, uh, you know, we have a signage guide that's it, that shows where to put the signs. And essentially the sign is see if you can have it so that most people can see a sign and can pay from a sign. From there, from inside their car. So next steps. Uh, what is in the works? So as the vice president of innovation, right? What is in the works for for Laz Parking? Yeah. Um, so there are some things in here that relate specifically to to text and Plevo. Um, some things that are just generally other things we're doing. Um, one of the things that now that we have text to park and this on demand park now pay now thing. Um, of course, now people with garages are saying, well, why can't we do that there? So we've, we've got a system where you can take a photo, you can pull the ticket and take a photo of that and, and pay on your phone and that'll be coming out um, before the end of the year. Uh, also in our, in our text to park um, web journey, we're, we're just adding Apple Pay and Google Pay so that you can just click your side button um, to, to pay. So your text to park transaction is click the link click your side button, hit OK, done. Does it, does it get much easier than that? Right, for sure. Um, and for some of our locations that have text to park, um, one of the key things is we, right now you get charged up front. You know, you say I'm going to park for two hours and you get charged up front. Um, these next two things here are uh, we are holding that transaction until the end of the transaction. So that many locations like a strip mall with, um, with a business that, that supplements your parking, gives you par a parking validation, you'll be able to pay with, you know, start with text, pay, come back to it and add a validation that reduces your final price. So at some kind of a discount. So, you know, parking might be $10, but the hairdresser gives you a $2 validation. You can um, add the validation. And the other good thing about, about this is I text, I walk away, I go to lunch, I realize my lunch is going long, I'm a long way from the, the parking uh, lot, and if I paid on the machine, I would my ticket would expire. Um, but if I paid on my phone, I can, I can extend the time. So um, that will be coming as well. And then we're also thinking of other ways that we can use text because it's sort of a, a friendly way to do it. Um, because we have custom, the, the ability to respond to the customer, unlike a lot of other ways that we interact. Um, a lot of customers who park regularly will use text, um, but maybe they want to uh, subscribe or park monthly because they work there or, or something. Um, so we're going to provide links to, for them to subscribe as well so that they can park now or they can subscribe. Um, and, uh, you know, with the allowing your time to be extended. I mean, who, who, what's better than getting a text to say, hey, you, just so you know, your lunch is probably going great, but your time is running out. Um, that's the perfect opportunity to use text and reach out to people. 
Um, and, uh, you know, and the other part of it is we're always building a more secure system as we go. And for password confirmations, when people do decide they want to, um, you know, uh, save all their credit card information and those kind of things, uh, the, it's the perfect opportunity um, to reach out to people to, to, um, to get them to confirm their password via text rather than send them an email, have them wrap through all the spam and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I, we're, those are kind of on, on our sort of wish list of where, what we would use text for next. Wow, that's a lot, uh, a lot in the pipeline there. Right, it is, yeah. So uh, we found this, so we thought these cars probably could have used your uh, your extension a little sooner. It looks like they've been parking there for a while, so uh, <laughs> they would have probably appreciate that. That. Um, so let's talk a little about just about Laz um, and Plevo. Any, any, any about support or any final things you wanna you wanna talk about about you know about any any part of your journey. Yeah, look, I, I think it, it really is it really is important. There, there are other ways to do things always, um, but where your business um, has really mission critical things um, to get done, such as this for us, given how much uh, of our business and how many of our customers essentially communicate with us this way, you want to make sure it works the best the best and, and that's what that's the experience we've had with Plevo and frankly the reason that I you know I said I'd be happy to talk to people about it because um you know it, it really is a best in class experience and uh we we just don't get issues it, you know we we have outages and things from time to time they're almost always on our side 99.9 percent .9 of the time it's something we did or a price that wasn't set up right or something like that um, but you know the kind of pipeline and the rails we're using with Plevo, we don't we don't have that issue. So um, you know being able being sort of cloud centric as well is, is a key thing rather than sort of an ancient system where we're dealing with a company that are really are experts in in the cloud space. And as we across our systems do more and more cloud um, integrations, that's really important. And frankly, we're we're learning. Um, you know, from our experience with Plevo, of how to do our own stuff too. So, um, so that's really good. Cool. Thank you. So just to do a little recap, uh, I want to talk a little takeaways. So, you know, these apply not just to LAS, but any business really looking uh, new ways to connect with their customers. Uh, you can use texting to improve your customer experience. You know, LAS, LAS did this uh, through convenience. You can use texting to reach a new audience. I think Laz, Laz did this, you know, reaching that non-app yeah. crowd, right? Um, that yeah. crowd that, that didn't want to download it. And then to innovate, using text, text to innovate. It, it sounds like Laz created basically like a whole new way to pay to park, like, mm -hmm. you know, uh, that, that wasn't there before. So it's, it's really an innovation. So, um, so there's lots of great benefits of incorporating testing into your business um, and for your customer outreach initiatives. Okay, so we do have some time to take some questions. Um, anybody has some questions, Let me just pop some up here. So let's go let's see here. So here's one, how do you know which cars have paid and when they leave? Yeah, that's, that's a really good, um, you know when they leave because they're no longer there. <laughs> that's probably the simplest way, and you know, in a, in a surface lot. But um, the great thing about the way our e-commerce system works from text all the way through to, to that point is when a customer um, uh, uses text, they add their license plate in part of the journey. So they say, this is me, this is where to send the receipt, this is my license plate. We collect the minimum amount of information we possibly can to make the transaction fast and easy, um, but we have your license plate temporarily. And that way, when we do a sweep through the location, um, we read the license plates and this, our system checks, is this vehicle paid? Is this vehicle paid? Is this vehicle paid? So what it does is it connects to our e-commerce system and checks that the vehicle is paid, currently paid. Um, so we usually have a mix of different type of customers in that location. So I might have a, 
a monthly parker who, um, you know, who pays every month and parks in that location because they work at the business next door. Um, those are on our subscription platform. Um, but all of the one-time purchases are literally on our, what's called one-time center in our side. And um, either uh, our, our staff use a handheld device and walk through and type in the license plate in our smaller locations. And at our larger locations, uh, they have a license plate recognition vehicle. So the vehicle just drives by and the, the cameras just ding, 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 ding down the street. And they, as they go, uh, each, each license plate, we say, is this person paid? Yes. Is this person paid? Yes. Is this person paid? And it checks. And so that's how we, um, that's how we can check that, that people have used text to park to pay. Wow. Um, um, that's pretty that, cool. That's, it is because in the, the old days, and, and if you, if you think about a machine, um, the way to check out a machine is you walk up and some of them have a screen that you have to scroll through and um, look at all the license plates that are on the machine and then go back and check in the lot or print out uh, like a technician's sheet of all the license plates, but you don't know where they are in the location. And then you have to walk around and cross them off. Uh, not convenient. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. Uh, this is definitely much, much simpler. Are, is there, are there any states or locations within a state where you've found that you've had con connecti uh, connectivity issues? No, I don't think we've had one thing. I mean, the, with, with parking, um, generally the um, paid parking is almost entirely in uh, uh, dense areas. Uh, not not always, but but at least if if it's not an area where a lot of people go, then chances are you don't have a parking issue and you don't have to charge for it. So um, and and coverage goes with density. So you know every one of our parking locations has good coverage, and because they're surface lot, they're above ground. Um, we just we just have never experienced any place where they've sort of tried it out and said, oh, this doesn't work. I mean, in in all those six hundred plus locations. It's, it's never happened. Um, the other thing is, and Pluto team can correct me here, but uh, I believe SMS travels on a different channel and it has greater penetration than, um, than voice. So sometimes you might think, uh, I can't get through on a voice channel or I'm, I'm in amongst the buildings, but the texts uh, go through and we, um, we don't have any issues with text not going through. The coverage is, is awesome. Uh, so, so scale, you went from right that one parking lot to hundreds of parking lots. How did Plevo scale along the way? Any issues with scaling? No, not li literally not a one. Um, you know, we, the, in the vo obviously the volume multiplied by 600 is a lot more. Um, also, we send new customers where we don't have the phone number. Um, a second text with all of the, um, you know, with all the carriers, you know, requirements like, you know, press stop to um, type stop to, uh, you know, stop receiving these and those kind of things. So uh, as we get new, uh, new customers who haven't done this before, we're sending even greater volume than what it looks like from 600 because you're, every new person is getting two texts uh, as well. Um, but yeah, we, we've never had we've never had one bandwidth issue. And, and if you look at um, a Monday or a Tuesday morning, uh, those are by far our busiest times. Um, and we do, I don't know, hundreds of thousands of transactions basically all at once across the country. Um, it's it the, the, the plebo piece of it is the thinnest, you know, not non bandwidth issue. We, we just don't have any issues there. At the you know compared to you know for instance our system that's logging um, you know creating transactions looking at pricing tables um, calculating pricing uh, sending sending a quote and and then um, transacting and sending it to our credit card company that's just a way fatter um, component than the plebo piece which really just handles the this is the location this is the link this person wants to pay so yeah no bandwidth issues at all. I think that kind of leads into another question here. Someone was curious, what, like what uh, part of the interaction is Plevo handling, the text portion, some of the payment handling or, or 
question marks or what? So, but I think you kind of just gonna, you know, but. Yeah, yeah. So really what, what Plevo does is it looks at our system and um, it handles uh, where the, you know, which location the request is coming from. It serves up to the customer a link relating to that specific location. So it's kind of taking in the customer's text that says I'm at this location. It's translating that into what, which one of our locations that is, um, getting the response from us. But we're then serving up the link um, back through Plevo and any custom links in there. And Plevo serves that to the customer and also the, you know, the other information about you know, how, to, how to stop receiving texts and those kind of things. So it, it's handling that part. Once the customer clicks the link, uh, it fires up our web customer journey and then, um, you know, putting your license plate in and paying with credit card happens on our side. But from the customer's perspective, it all just looks like LAS. Um, they don't see, you know, this is coming from Plevo at all. The links are, you know, go.lasparking.com slash MA1234. Um, so it, it's completely white labeled. Uh, it all just looks like you're you're talking direct with us, which is exactly how we want it. So here's an interesting one because you'd mentioned this during during the webinar. What were the advantages of the short versus the long code? Um, that's a good question. I I think and at the time the way the long code worked is we would have a dedicated number, uh, but the response might come back from uh, more than one type of number, well, that more than one number, it didn't necessarily come back to that. And I think the Plevo team could re probably respond if that's still the case. Um, that's the first thing. So you would potentially start a text and then receive the response right away, but possibly from a different number. So it would be in a different text chain. Um, the short code, uh, it's, it's literally question and answer. I mean, when I look at mine, I can see every time I've parked in one long text chain, I can see, you know, I was at CA1234 and then I get my response. And then if I go to a different lot, you know, CA5678, um, I'll type it in and I'll see, you know, last week that I was at CA1234, it's all one nice long, long, long text chain. And then the other part seems really simple. People don't want to type a big long number. They want to type a right. short number. That's, that's a good point. Right? Five, three, two, four, two is really easy. Easy. It has a it has a cadence to it too. Uh, that's that's a good point. We're making you're making things convenient, right? A shorter number is just more convenient. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so it looks like uh, last one here. So does a customer pay in advance for parking charges for X amount of minutes uh, if they leave earlier their refund, or is there any unused time? Yeah. So. Um, Essentially what this does is it mimics the way a pay station works. That is you pay when you arrive and you pay for an amount of time that you're going to stay there. So two hours, three hours, et cetera. Um, and uh, we don't, we don't credit back. If you, if you leave 10 minutes early, same as parking meters and all those kind of things, it's, that's pretty standard. Um, that would make it a much more complicated transaction <laughs> and, and generally the pricing at local surface lots is pretty reasonable. So, you know, you come back 15 minutes earlier, et cetera. Um, it's not too big of a deal. Uh, but as I said there on the, the future things, uh, we will also be adding the ability to extend. So a customer might say, well, look, I might be 90 minutes, but let me pay for 60. Um, and then, uh, you know, if I stay longer than 60, I'll, I'll add on another 30 after that. Uh, and we we found in our sort of testing and Q and A that uh, that that's a pretty reasonable way to deal with it. At a at a garage, you know, the gate goes up, that time stamps how long you're in there. The gate goes down, and then when you go to exit, it calculates the exact time you're there. Um, but it's a much more complicated transaction. It needs gates, it needs entryways, it needs all of that. Um, you know, an ungated surface lot is a nice simple thing. Drive on, pay. And leave. That's uh, that just reminds me. Like I don't know how many times like we, we go to a city and then like you have a five minute discussion on how long you're going to be there. How much money should we put in? Right, like <laughs> kind of takes all that guesswork out. So, 
Uh, okay. Yeah. Oh, one more here. I yep. Um, so it says based on the response, and this is then this is not a fully text only version. Requires a smartphone. Yes, that's correct. It is. It is a smartphone, and the reason that oh, you need you need to be able to access a web browser. But, yeah. So okay. it's primary. It's primarily app, Apple and Android. Um, yeah, if you had a if you had a flip phone, you could do the text. But once you click the link, um, you know, if if you didn't have a, a browser uh, on your phone, you wouldn't be able to uh, to pay. Kind of like any other transaction where you need a credit card. Um, smartphone dependent. Um, but look, most most places still have a pay station option. But the the penetration of smartphones these days, especially post COVID, um, is so high. Uh, that that we're really seeing a, a dramatic downturn in people walking over and trying to trying to pay on the credit card uh, on their um, on the machine. Okay. Well, thank you so much again, Patrick, uh, for joining us today and talking about Laz's uh, text to park. Uh, how yeah, you use you text welcome. messaging, yeah, um, really how it transformed, you know, your, your business, how you transform the parking space. Like we, we truly appreciate it. Um, again, thank you, thank you so much. Yeah, it's great, great to talk with you guys, and great to, uh, great to talk a little bit about what we've done here. Yeah, and thank you everybody for attending. We truly appreciate it, and have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks, everyone.